All right, we are here on Adobe Live at Max 2018. I'm Veronica Belmont. I'm a PM on the Adobe Spark team, and I'm super thrilled to have two of our Spark insiders here on the show with us today. Thank you. <laughs> Cassie Ose and Kiki Bryant. Yes. Thank Hello, you. everyone. Yeah, the two hosts of the Uppity Negros podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about how they use Adobe Spark to promote their brand and create assets for their brand. But first, I want to kind of dive into what the show's about and how you two got hooked up doing it. Sure. Okay, so uh, Cassie and I actually met in high school. Uh, we met in high school, we just kind of stayed in touch, um, and throughout the years on Facebook, we just kind of realized, you know, we have a lot of the same things viewpoints on things, um, things in common, and so we developed kind of this respect for each other based on those things, and then we actually started dating first, and then when we were dating, we went on a friend's podcast, and we were like, you know what? We I feel like we thing. could do this. Like we're pretty good at this. Yeah. We're, we're pretty <laughs> nice. good at this. We could do this. And because we know that we're so similar in the things that we believe, right. um, we we have this great working relationship that mm -hmm. is honestly uh, yeah. like the best part of our relationship with each other right. to me. Um, so when we were, when we started the podcast, we were a little bit scared of just kind of really, really, really putting ourselves out mm -hmm. there because so much of our material is kind of controversial. And so we kind of shied away from really promoting ourselves for, I'd say, the first four months yeah, of We didn't out. really know what technology to use, how yeah. to brand ourselves and what was out there. And then one day we were just like, you know one what, let's, let's be ourselves. Let's, and let's, let's here's this it. thing called Adobe. <laughs> Here's this thing called Adobe Spark. And Let's jump in. So I actually am the one who is going to take credit for finding Spark. Yes, she did right. find Spark. Um, I found Spark. Um, I was just playing around one day um, on Photoshop, and I think when I opened Creative Cloud, a Spark ad or something came out. Excellent. And I'm like, Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Our plan is working perfectly. And so then I went, let me just go and see what this is about, and I almost instantly fell in love with it. Um, I, I actually, I have a friend who works at Adobe um, and he's a photographer and he actually takes a lot of our promo pictures, like our... Yeah, your pictures are amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I immediately messaged him and I was like, you have been holding out kind, sir. You did not tell me about Spark. I am upset with you. Yes. Yes. And so then he just kind of asked me, you know, what do you like so much about Spark? And one of the things that I like most is the branded features. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the branded features are not free. Um, you do actually have to be premium. But what I like about the branded features here is that as you can see, you upload your logo and you can upload different logos. Um, so we do have other versions of our logo. You can make them your primary logo if you want to primarily use those. We like using this, uh, oops. We like using this white one with the black just because it shows up on everything. Yeah, it really and stands out nicely. It really stands out and we don't have to continuously change it mm -hmm. up. Uh, you upload your brand color, so our brand palette is pretty much simple. Black and yellow. And it's also right. very, very similar to Spark with, yeah, the, with the yellow and the black. You know, uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't actually realize that before. I, but you know, right. I realized that yesterday when I did the live tweet takeover <laughs> and I made a, a graphic and it was just like Uppity Negris X uh, Spark and I was like, huh. Yeah. Look at there. Um, and then you can upload your brand font. Um, so our brand font is one called Kaleem. It is my absolute favorite. It is so hard for me not to use it for every single project. And Cooper Black is and the And then next one Cooper Black like is well. another one that we use um, for, for the more body. Bold. Yeah. And so this makes it so easy to have everything very, very standard. So even if we're experimenting with other color schemes within our actual graphics, it's still branded. Yeah. And that's something that I think has helped us stick out. I would say in the months, uh, about four or so months since we've been using Sparks to brand our things, mm -hmm. we have gone from probably like a com uh, 400 ish people following to us. To about six now, almost 7,000. Six, almost wow. 7,000 yes, in, in four months. And um, not even just that part, our reach has gone from you know, a couple hundred to, if I showed you our statistics across websites, million, almost a million people now. Yeah. I could show you the, the analytics. And that is absolutely amazing. And I feel like it is 100% because we have a brand recognition that is very, very strong. Um, our 
our messaging itself is very, very strong. Yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of people have a thirst for that. And one of the things um, I think I mentioned in the video that I submitted that actually so got us to be <laughs> Spark Insiders is how, how much of the media for black women is not by black women, mm -hmm. but then also how much of the media um, that is similar to ours and that is very black centered um, is the visuals that they put out. Like you can tell it's made on Microsoft Paint. Yeah. And you know, even if they're saying very, very valid things, it's visually off-putting mm -hmm. and so I feel like the graphics that we put out are very visually inviting like, like they're beautiful and, they're beautiful yeah. mm -hmm. um, and so we're, that's we're on one the, of the we're things on the conference Wi-Fi so you know sometimes <laughs> it takes <laughs> some good. things to <laughs> roll fine. through but we'll move on out from there yeah I think the the personal branding stuff especially with like the the specific fonts to be able to use is a really nice feature because I mean the the, the standard fonts we have about 50 of them are great and yes. they, they're definitely like they stand out in a really nice way. Yeah but I have a couple of the uh, standard fonts that I really really love. Yeah, like yeah. Proxima I love, is one yeah, of them. Proxima yeah. is my great. I really really love Wonderlust. I also That's like nice. uh, one of my favorite. What, uh, Gothic, what is it? I like the one that kind of looks like a brush stroke. I can't remember the yes, name. Yes, uh, yes, I can't remember yes. the name of that one either but um, and so in the couple of the last couple of months, I've been playing around with Spark. Um, and one of the other things that I love is how incredibly easy it is um, for you to just, so you go, you start, you have all of the projects that you've already done down here. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, even though we have a lot of different color schemes going on, you, the branding is still very, very strong. You still very clearly see our logo, our colors. Everything is very, very still black woman centered. Uh, mm -hmm. Besides these graphics that I made when I was live tweeting um, the session. And then when you're starting a new graphic, it's really, really easy to just start from if you need an Instagram post, if you need a Facebook cover, a Facebook post, Pinterest, um, I, I've used it now because I'm putting myself out there as a, a branding. Um, social media marketer. Like social media marketer for you know startups. Um, and so these types of things are very, very great. And I actually use this for my own personal branding um, for my LinkedIn profile. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I've even so. used uh, the web page one for my own artwork because I do a lot of illustrations and it's very good to visually yeah. you know, expose that artwork that I'm What doing. I love about page in particular is that you can do like that glide show effect where yes. you can stack like multiple glide exactly. shows on each other and, and especially beautiful. with like artwork and photography like yes. they scroll through in a really beautiful way. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's, those are one of my favorite parts. Uh, a hidden feature of this that I actually found the other day is that if you start a graphic, um, and let me just, because I usually do it a lot on my phone, so let me just start a graphic. Oh, that's the thing, Adobe Spark works on your phone. You yes. can go yes. mobile. Let's um, talk about so that. <laughs> if you could scroll all the way to the bottom. I'll, I'll just start, start with scratch. this one, cool. yeah. So I'll just start with this one. So this is just some words on a plain colored background. And so if I just take this, right? Mm -hmm. If I go to the download button, I'm sorry, not the download button, the share. Um, maybe it's different options. Yeah, you get more social sharing options on the on phone because it shares directly to but them. But a lot of times when you have just the screen. words mm -hmm. um, here and then the background and I'm on my phone, I can save it as a transparent PNG. Right. And that is very, very useful, especially because we also sell merchandise from our from our podcast content. Uh, one of uh, I'm wearing the shirts now. One of them it says <laughs> She's Melan like, available now. Available now. At the, uh, uh, Etsy one of the shirts it says Melon and Magic. Um, and so, if you're a person like me and you don't do your own um, manufacturing of your merchandise, but you use drop shipping, this is a very, very great tool for you to avoid photoshopping altogether and just kind of get a transparent PNG that you can then put on t-shirts I mean, for merch. We love Photoshop. We love Photoshop. But we, we love Photoshop. Photoshop. We love all we of love Photoshop, lines. but love you them. know what? We also love Spark. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Ding. <laughs> so. Yeah, so this is a great template, but yeah, show me how you kind of like go through and, and brandify things. Okay, so what you do is like say I want this to be Uppity Negris branded random remix template. So I would go make it my brand colors, um, go here, um, choo, 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 choo. So go up here, my brand is there. Nice. So then I can just resize this how I'd like. And then if I want this, 
Uh, and this is uh, actually a picture. Yeah, yeah, this is an image. Um, so I can't change the, the font on this one. But already, you know, it has my colors. Um, I'm gonna change the opacity of this. Um, I can bring this forward, I believe. Yeah, with the order, yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. I did not want to change that. So, I'm gonna bring this forward. Nice. Yeah, so. you can you can move around the assets on the on the yeah. on the board. Yeah, and it's all very board. simple to do. And then just go add, and then I add my logo. Wi-Fi man, <laughs> it's killing me. It's funny because it's been great like all week, and then today, like suddenly, I decided I wanted to wanted to drop out on us. Yeah, my my laptop has been going in and out on this uh, Wi-Fi all well, so day. Tell me about what like kind of tools you use to actually produce the podcast too. We oh. actually use Adobe Audition. Nice. Yeah. So I'm yeah. the person who mainly plays around with Audition, and it's such a phenomenal platform. But because before I was using GarageBand, mm -hmm. and GarageBand is great but it's not audition. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Apple. No, but, uh, we love our friends at Apple. We yes. do. But audition really allows you to get technical with the sound that you want to produce and develop, which is yeah. really what I love. And with the unveiling of the possible uh, Project Kazoo, just makes things even better, which I'm really excited about. So, well, how, yeah. so how will you use that? It's, oh. it's actually pretty funny because all of the music on our um, podcast, like the in-between stuff, um, the intro, the outro, the, the session, the segment interludes. Cassie actually produced them all. Yeah. And nice. she had had n no kind of no. sound experience prior to um, audition. And her just kind of sort of playing around yeah. uh, because it's so easy to, to do that. I actually, because Cassie is Ghanaian, and so I, I nicknamed her uh, Kanye West Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Because the, the, the stuff sounds really, really great and it Thank sounds you. really, really professional. And um, we do have a lot of things to learn in terms of improving our sound quality mm -hmm. because we are going into this like having known nothing about graphic design, having known nothing about um, sound mixing and mastering. And we're just figuring that all out yeah. Yeah. Um, as we go along. And so that's why we're, we're having a little break right now where we're really, really focusing on improving our sound quality, and then season two of Uppity Negris will begin in December. December. Nice. Yeah. But Kazoo yeah. will definitely allow us to play around with jingles, because I know she has a jingle in mind that she wants to. Uppity <laughs> Negrises. Oh, God. <laughs> Ship it. But, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, great. So this is not loading, so I wonder if we can show, if we can switch computers and show mine for a second, too, so we can see yeah. like some of the other aspects. So, as I was mentioning, I'm also a podcaster, and I do a sci-fi fantasy podcast called Sword and Laser, mm -hmm. and I think that was one of the reasons why, like, when I saw your video, it really spoke to me, because yeah. I was like, okay, they're just starting out, like, they're <laughs> using Adobe products, like, that's awesome, like, I use it for the exact same reasons, and so just because we're having some Wi-Fi troubles, I'll see if we can get in here, but I have, um, so I do all my album art also in, in Spark. Mm. And it's really nice because I've got that nice square like aspect ratio mm -hmm. um, and I can brandify things really easily. So like we can change the background. This is a this is a pun on the name of the book that we were reading for this past month called Slan. Um, <laughs> and you can see I've got like my, I my see logo. What you did there. logo. Yeah, is it a slam dunk? Oh, that is nice. Yep, so we've got our logo here. We can make it as big as we want. We can change the background. Uh, this is just for, for people who haven't seen Spark before and right. might not know like exactly what it does, but we can do. I think I searched for basketball under the free photos. And that's the thing. There's a lot of great stock options available yes, in Spark absolutely. already. Even, yeah. even if you don't have an Adobe stock subscription, exactly. which we do. Oh, um, nice. We do have an that's Adobe stock level, subscription. Yeah, yeah but the, the free images are absolutely better. great. They are gorgeous, um, and they all have really, really great... Um, What's yeah. the word I'm looking for? Content. Like, there's just so many options. There's so many options. I was actually surprised by the amount of free options. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that really blows me away. So this is this is under our find free photos uh, list, and that's going to give you all sorts of content from that's completely free to use for right. for anything paid. So if you're a business, if you're like putting stuff on on advertisements for mm -hmm. Facebook, for example, these photos are all free to use, which I think is amazing. 
But yeah, you can import from Google Photos, Dropbox, any of the normal places where you would want to get content from. Do you use um, Page at all? We have not used Page. I've used Page. Yeah? That's well, how I developed I have the website. Not used page. So apparently show Cassie, the website. Um, so our website here, I'll yeah, go to our so. home page. That's how I was able to outline everything to put onto this website through Page. Nice. And it was so easy to use. So beautiful. So did you use domain forwarding? Yes. Then for, okay. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, that looks really good. Thank you. So the thing with Page is that it's basically like a great tool for making splash pages or marketing pages. Right. Um, it's not like necessarily like a, like a full website, but it does have a lot of good features that let you kind of highlight content, uh, embed videos. Right. Um, embed links like CTA buttons, um, so that's oh, that's gorgeous. So a lot of people don't know this, but Cassie <laughs> is also a really, really amazing uh, writer and digital artist in her own right. Thank you. Um, so this is the profile picture on our Facebook page, and Cassie actually drew this. That's <laughs> so good. Thank you. So she used that using uh, Adobe Sketch. A uh, uh, Sketch, yes. And you know. Being here, we, we sat down and we actually took stock of just for all of the things that we do, how many Adobe products we use, and they are all exclusively Adobe products. Yeah. Like, I would say so we Adobe probably use about us. seven. <laughs> <laughs> Get the right people listening but, around here. But you know what, right it's, it's pretty, pretty cool because they were debuting yesterday, Project Gemini. Mm -hmm. and, oh my gosh, I broke down and into tears. <laughs> like actually literally cried when they were showing the oil paint features and I posted it on our Twitter. Isn't it and, nuts? And, so beautiful. And oh, so amazing. they saw the tweet um, in Adobe offices and they actually gifted us a year of Adobe Cloud yeah. for free. And so we are going to, we are so excited so to create so much more amazing stuff. Yes. Like we have so many great projects coming yes. up and it's all very creative. And I love that we started from, you know, obviously just the podcast, but mm -hmm. thanks to Adobe products, we're branching out into so many other and being mediums creative and, and engaging our own creativities mm -hmm. on our own terms and doing what we love. Yes. And this is if I had to quantify, I would say like doing the things that we're doing now is probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> <laughs> also, kudos to you two for being able to do it like in a partnership because yeah, like, not many people can work well I together. I tried to as do a, a podcast with my husband once, uh -oh. and we almost killed each other. <laughs> <laughs> like we we put out like a beta episode, and we're yeah. like, we're never doing this again. <laughs> like I want to stay in love with you, and no, it was it that know, bad. It's, but it's, it's, it's stressful. It, it is, is stressful. But yeah. um, I was talking about this with another insider yesterday yesterday, me and Cassie's work styles, they're very complementary to each yeah. other. Um, I am very much so great at creative direction, like I'm a very big picture kind of person, like this is this is the general thing that we're going for, these are the more aesthetic-y things, like those are mm -hmm. great, and she's really, really great at minute details and timekeeping and time mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. and so I think because we bring such different strengths to our partnership, mm -hmm. um, both in our business and outside of our business. Uh, that's what makes us strong. Yeah, yeah. So. so how do you how do you want to in the future like support the show? I, I saw a while back on your Facebook page that you were planning on launching a Patreon. Do you want yes. to talk about yes. how you create assets for that? Okay, so we actually did start the Patreon. Um, let me just pull it up here. Oh, now the Wi-Fi wants. To yeah, work. now. <laughs> But while she's loading up the Patreon, we've also talked about using XD to develop an app. That way, we're not just stuck on, you know, web interface. Yeah. We can have a mobile application that's ready to go, whatever you need. It's and obviously, we'll still have the podcast. Yes. But we are, like, one of the things I'm working on right now is actually a coloring book for little black girls. Yes. Um, and also a children's book. Oh, my heart. Oh, yeah, a children's book for little black girls. And it's um, the premise of the children's book, it's going to be um, kind of like the magic in black girls' hair because that's something that is very um, undersold. You should talk to Tia Brown in our insider group because she also has been doing children's books and she's using Paige to actually like animate them. So it's almost like a moving, that, like, like a it's really yeah, cool. That's, that's what I was thinking. Um, another yeah. book I'm working on is called A is for Asante and it's gonna be like an alphabet kind of book, but every letter of the alphabet will be a, a different African culture. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was thinking of using animate features for that so that it's an interactive ebook. And so 
that that's yeah. something that we're working on and just being able to do all of these things and having the software to do it now for free <laughs> <laughs> is is really amazing we are so incredibly thankful to adobe nice yes. so this is your patreon yes yes this is our patreon oh we gotta fix that we gotta get more than zero dollars per month we yes we need to get more than zero dollars per month um, great content support great content <laughs> because um, we have a lot of projects that we're going to do like mm -hmm. I put this That's is an exclusive like preview of one of the coloring pages I made oh for gosh. the coloring book I'm working on that's gorgeous um, yeah. and so I'm very very excited about that and so that's something I put up just kind of free for patrons here's another one um, to -choo do and another one um, and so I was actually I did all of these last week I just randomly got inspired um, and I think that this is the video I actually um, uploaded to you guys for the contest and that's on there. So there's not much on here now because we don't have very many patrons to post for. Do you want to play that video so we can see what a Spark video looks like in action? Oh yes, and then we did actually make this with Spark. I was like, I recognize that, that text treatment. <laughs> Nice. I also, like, I'm about to start redoing my um, my Patreon video as well because ours is super old. Uh, and But having a video like this that kind of shows what you're all about and, and what, like, value you're going to bring to patrons right. is, like, super important so they can see, like, all right, what what is this podcast? Who are these hosts? Right. What am I going to get out of giving my money? I don't think they can hear the um, audio, the but, the, but yeah. we're, uh, yeah. we narrate in the background um, just kind of what we do, the importance of representation, mm -hmm. um, how there is a lot of content that is similar to ours, but it's oversaturated with, with sexism and misogyny. Met, uh, people who just want to take money from the community and not really provide anything of value back. Mm -hmm. right. And so that's, that's the entire purpose of what we combat. And then these are the responses we started getting since we started using Spark. And oh, as nice. you can see, they're overwhelmingly positive and great. And we are so thrilled. This is, this <laughs> is an incredibly humbling yet validating experience. Definitely. And so. Well, so what has been the hardest part of, of doing a podcast from like the production perspective or the, is it the marketing perspective? Where do you, where do you find the most friction? For me, the production is the struggle because outside of podcasting, I'm a student. Mm -hmm. I'm a PhD student, so it's really juggling my time yeah. and trying to make sure, okay, I get the sound quality as well as we need to to put the content out, but I also have this homework assignment too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a labor of love. Exactly, for sure. exactly. And what about for you? Marketing, for you. You know, because I feel like the hardest thing is the production part, uh, which I have very little parts in because I am, at this point, very useless in that regard. <laughs> oh, um, no. <laughs> Self-awareness is a beautiful thing. That it is. Um, I just get to create and not really deal with the, the harder part of that because um, Cassie's the sound engineer. Mm -hmm. And so this it, it hasn't been, quote, hard for me yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's great too because she's picking up illustration as well and drawing, which alleviates some of the burden off of me because right. that was solely my thing for a while. So now it's great that we can share in it. So when I'm busy, you know, I know that she can also pick that up and take care of that. It's, there's so many different elements I think that go into a successful show. I mean, you really have to get the. I, I, I never say like you have to get the production perfect on the first few episodes right. because you're spending that time Our trying to find your voice. Our first episode is for it. Was it. Yeah. <laughs> They're it all bad. Fun. But that's the problem. Like you have to publish that first episode. Right. That's what I tell people because they're like, oh no, it's garbage, it's bad, we sound stupid, like we don't know what we're talking about. Literally everyone's first podcast sounds that way. Yeah, it's really bad. And like unless you're working with like a super pro outlet that does this professionally, like right. everyone who cares and is passionate about it is going to have a really like crappy yeah. first episode or two. Right. I think our first episode was actually recorded on her laptop so you can see you can hear the hum from her laptop <laughs> and then I am on the phone and so you can hear the hum from her laptop and then I'm muffled because I'm on the phone it is god awful yeah and so for our fans who heard that first episode and decided that they wanted more like first of all get some standards no I'm kidding <laughs> um, but, but no but thank, thank you, you for still supporting us thank you <laughs> 
That's amazing. Yeah. And then there's the whole aspect of having to actually go out and market yourself. Right. And if that's not something you spend a lot of time doing, I mean, it's it's all about like being consistent across various platforms, exactly. like having that presence be like consistent and constant and frequent right. on like Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and all these different places where yes. like potential listeners can find you. Right. It's a lot of work. It is. It and is, we're going to be expanding too to mm -hmm. YouTube as we start our vlog. Especially so now that Adobe they release Premium Adobe. Rush. Yes. Premier Rush. Yep. Oh. Yeah, the official Gosh. name. It's no longer Project Rush. Yes. It's Premier Rush. Premier Rush. I'm ready. Yeah. My body is ready. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Lightroom as well. So yeah. I've started, you know, a photography bug mm -hmm. in me has kicked in. So I'm going to be taking advantage of that as well. Yeah, because even though the, the stock stuff is great, we want a more personal connection to our right. graphics. Right. And so. Um, I love photography. I've been a model for a while. Um, I do a lot of modeling for stuff. Um, and so, but Cassie picking up the camera is actually <laughs> something I'm very much so looking forward to because I'm always ready yeah. for a while. Um, it's like I'm ready for my close-up. I am, I am. That's awesome. Well, I wanted to walk through a little bit also like how video works um, because we saw that final project. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to see this is this is my own personal page. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of started working on like a, a Patreon video for Sword and Laser, mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of to illustrate how easy it is to take content from your hard drive from you know from the free free uh, images right. text using icons from the Noun project. All right, come on, internet, <laughs> let's do this thing. You can do it, Wi-Fi. I do believe, it. I believe in, you. in you. But uh, in the meantime, I can show how, like, on our on our Patreon page, like, I made oh, this that's banner. Oh, cool. 507 patrons. We got a long way to go. We've we been do. doing our show for 10 years. Well, wow. okay. <laughs> okay, we've been at <laughs> so it for, like, what, seven about months? About it. Yeah. <laughs> you got time. You got some time. Um, but I made this banner background um, with Spark, and what I loved about it is because you can plug in like the custom dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, so, like for example, Patreon isn't a default like size we have in our system yet. Um, but I've been talking with them a ton because I think there's really a lot of of like commonality between our platforms. Like right. people who are creating need to find ways to be able to promote their work right. and be able to get paid for the hard work that they do. So it feels like a very natural like uh, partnership. Right. Mm -hmm. um, not official partnership, just like keeping open communication. Um, but I was just able to like pull off their best practices page, like the right dimensions for like a background image and plugged it in. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's also what we did for ours mm -hmm. and that's great. Like yeah. it is so useful. And then for, for Facebook actually I did a Spark video as our backdrop. So I literally just searched for like like science fiction. These are on like 10 second loops and they just uh, phase in and out between sci-fi and fantasy, which wow. is like what our genres are all about. So you can actually do like animated backdrops for, for Facebook, for your banner, um, which I think is a really That's cool way awesome. of kind of doing it. Subtle, but I think it adds a little more like movement and, and cool stuff there as well. Let's see if we got our video working. Okay, great. Um, so I have it right now in the in the kind of like Instagram uh, square st like uh, feed video size. Um, but yeah, I just basically I built this live on stage yesterday at our community pavilion, just like calling out like what, what would be space related, what would be yeah. science fiction related, and people yelled things out and we added them <laughs> in. Um, but yeah, it's just a series of slides that you plug in. This is actually a video that I pulled from one of our like free content sources, oh, um, so okay. it's commercially available to use. So See, that's something it. I did not know that there were free video. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So just if you just search for like like free 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 use like video content on the web, um, there's tons of, of options. Uh, some from the same companies that we partner with, like Unsplash and Pixabay, mm. for images under our Find Free Photos. They're just catalogs of, of images that you can use anywhere. Um, so yeah, my final version. We also have our theme music um, from our show as the background music to this. You can I like that too. You yeah. can yeah. upload the music that you want, but I do think that the the stock sounds that they have are really really great. Like there's a bunch of different moods. Uh, we've used a couple of them in different videos. Yeah. So what's next for you guys? What do you want to do? Where do you want to take the show? Well, we would like to ultimately turn it into like a brick and mortar space. Really? Um, we, because we we when we started the podcast, we specifically made our website .org because that's what we're going. We want to be an organization where m little black girls mostly, but you know, open to everybody, can learn STEAM concepts and just kind of engage that. Because what is STEAM? Tell the people. Tell the people. <laughs> what I, STEAM is. <laughs> 
um, science, technology, um, engineering, engineering, art, and, and math. math. Mm -hmm. And so using all of those ideas and just kind of engaging those creative minds, especially in, in our communities. Because me, I am from um, West Inglewood in Chicago, mm -hmm. and it is a very under-resourced community. But there is so much ingenuity and creativity there that I feel like if more people were tapping into it, some really great things could come out of there. Yeah. And so um, that's where we're heading next. We actually have a working name for the project. We call it Sankofa STEAM Academy. Um, Sankofa is a West African bird. Yes. Uh, and how and it has a really interesting gait because it looks back but it moves forward. Oh, interesting. And so, so that is a very over yeah, its shoulder. And so it's a very powerful metaphor because that's what we all should be doing. Looking you're back and learning from our mistakes right. but moving forward exactly. towards the future. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we chose that name not only for the, the West African connection uh, to Cassie, <laughs> but also because that is a very powerful, yes. powerful metaphor for what we do, uh, the, con the context of our podcast and the context of our other work as well. Awesome. So by the way, we have a live chat room here at Adobe Live, so if any of you out there in the audience have Hello, any questions world. for Cassie and Kiki or myself, like feel free to ask them in the chat room. Um, they were asking earlier about Paige and about uh, how you would use that, so we could we could run through some of the demos too of um, of building something if you want to do that. You want to build something on Paige? Yeah, that would be fun. Um, hopefully our mm. Wi-Fi will will hold up with us. Uh, we might use, need to do use, you use your mine? laptop okay. because. Um, yeah, my, your laptop my is Chromebook going through is very limited. Things. This is a very crappy. It's had a hard life. Chromebook. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is essentially our this is our visual browse. Uh, it's populating right now on our internet. Um, this is kind of like the the center for where you can start any of your projects. And Kiki was showing it a little bit earlier as well. Um, we just have a lot of default templates that you can work with that mm -hmm. are really beautiful, and just to give you kind of an idea of like the kinds of things you can do okay. for your small business or for your organization. Um, but we're going to start from. This web page here. So yeah, page is really great, like I was saying, for like landing pages, marketing pages, newsletters, photo journals, like there's so many different options that you can That's choose another from. thing. I use a lot of Spark graphics for our newsletters. And also oh, when nice. I want to watermark, mm -hmm. I'll just go into Spark really quickly and just splash our logo across stuff mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. we have that one page that is exclusive for our patrons, but we put teasers out on our um, Facebook page with um, coming soon, the name of the project, um, you know, really opaque, and then our logo nice. across it so that, you know, nobody can really use it, but like they know what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> and that's important when Major you're trying to monetize your content, um, is that you don't just give it all away. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's Patreon. That's what we love about Patreon. <laughs> um, so this is kind of like our blank slate of, of Spark page. Um, and the first thing you want to do is always to add a like a cover image, right. because that's the thing that's going to show up on social media. Exactly. It's going to be the thumbnail. It's going to be the first thing that everybody sees in your project. Um, um, I'm trying to think what I should do here. So we have a we have a book of the month club uh, on sword and laser, and so it's kind of like it's October. So we did kind of like a spooky spooky subject. So we uh, read a book called Lovecraft Country, which is great by the way. It's a fantastic book. Um, but I don't think we have too many like Lovecraftian horrors in, in stock <laughs> image, pre stock image. So I'll just search like Country Road to get something like kind of cool and atmospheric. And there's oh good okay. Some Spark good ones. has great like landscapey photos. It does. It's beautiful. Yeah, Ooh, I want to start taking some. That's nice. I that's like that one. That's pretty creepy. I'm into that. I'm like expecting Michael Myers. Right. To, like, <laughs> hop out. Is there? Is there or like new... Jason? Yeah. Oh, there Obey is a Henry Hollywood sticker. Movie. Yeah, I'm here for the Obey Henry. That's a that's a call out to uh, my uh, friends at Extra Life, uh, another podcasting crew. Um, so we can set a focal point here as well, and you can see that like. Um, that like uh, portrait mode mm -hmm. preview, and that's what it's going to look like on your iPhone. Right. So if you, it looks great in widescreen, it looks great on smaller screens, um, but this is important for like choosing where on the image we want the shot to be focused on. So we'll do it down, right down the center of that spooky, like foggy roadway here. Click that save. you totally expect a serial killer to pop yeah, out. Yeah, like I would definitely not go down that path if I or was just, just like a red balloon just <laughs> coming. <down. laughs> Oh no. <laughs> or like a little girl just like just walking by herself. <laughs> and she has like long straight hair and yeah. her hands are at her side. They're the worst. <laughs> Why are they so creepy? Nobody knows. All right, so then we'll say Lovecraft Country. Okay. And we should be doing one for you too, but I don't have any of your assets on my machine, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so we'll just play around here to have a book pick. 
Oh, gotta capitalize that. I have never spelled something right or written it correctly on a live demo in my entire life. <laughs> never the first time. That's for sure. All right, and then whenever you see these pluses in Spark page, mm -hmm. that's where you can add extra content. So photos, yep. text, call to action buttons, photo grids. What kind of, let's show that glide show feature because that's Ooh, really yeah. my favorite. This isn't really like specific to, um, to the project that I'm making, but I just want to demonstrate it because it's so awesome. Let's see, we'll do like, we'll do various motion pictures that can kind of slide in together here. And once these all load up, I'll be able to save. There we go. And so now when we go into um, preview mode, you'll see how they all kind of blend together like crazy seamlessly. And so for me, this is just like an awesome way to like show travel photos or right. if you're doing a presentation. And it just moves, all that animation is, is just built in automatically. You don't have to plan it, you don't have to time it, you don't have to animate it. It just rolls through like that. Cool. Well, let's see some more of your stuff, or maybe we can build something else. So you have presences on Instagram and Twitter yeah, and all the yeah. other the normal uh, Our Twitter normal presence haunts. is pretty low just because we do not know how to Twitter. We don't Twitter We do well. not Twitter well. <laughs> we don't do the Twitters. Uh, <laughs> but we're uh, learning. <laughs> we're, we're learning. Um, so. Just yesterday I asked her, how do you retweet? What is that? <laughs> felt like an old person who just doesn't know technology. I am old. <laughs> yes, I'm very old. How do we do the Twitters? <laughs> um, no, man, Twitter is like it's a it's a it's the wild west. Still. It is. It's it's pretty. I've been on it for since 2006, and yeah. I've been doing the, the tweets for a while, and I still feel like I have no idea right. what's going to be <laughs> successful or what's going to just fall completely flat. My favorite thing to do is because it's so Instagram, it's like take a quote that I love and then try to find a great graphic for it. Yes. So yes. this is one of my favorite quotes and it's a quote by uh, Tony Cade Bambara. And the quote goes, the role, the role of the artist is to make the revolution irresistible. So what I did is I just hold, like uh, searched Search for revolution. a woman <laughs> raising fists because you know that's very much so yeah. uh, a revolutionary thing. And then I, found a color scheme that I liked. So the original photo was not this color. Um, I found a nice filter that I felt matched well with the font that I was using. Mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of stuck our logo on there. Mm -hmm. And then it just automatically goes to Instagram. Right. And so that's one of the ways that I, I really like to use this is in quotes. But if I like that, uh, let me just go back to the home page here. When you go to manage brand, you get like all of these really, really cool and templates, templates yeah. that you can use that are already branded and you can just plug in the information that you need. And then you can also add your own templates. So when I'm adding a quote that is um, within or from somebody that is of the demographic that we're speaking towards, you know, like a black woman, I like to stick them on this template. And so That's this gorgeous, is a quote, yeah. yeah, this is a quote from Harriet Tubman, and it's a template I made myself. We got our logo on here, it's small and unnoticeable, so it's not really taking away from it, but if somebody like screenshot this, they can see that we made it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that's also really important is that you are getting some form of credit um, mm -hmm. for the graphics that you're creating. Right. Um, and so that's another feature that I really, really love with Spark is the uh, ability to, to create your own templates. Right, yeah. So. And what's really cool too is with uh, with the iOS, we don't. I don't know if I have a cable over here for, for that, but I'll, I'll I can show it later. But when um, when you bring in text into the iOS app, so of course everything syncs between the apps and the web right. version of, of Spark. Um, so if you're editing something on the web and you want to switch over to mobile because you're at an event like Max, for example, and you want to be um, you want to be you want to be uh, sorry. Yeah, if you have a, if we have a cable for uh, the computer, so I can show the the iPhone, that would be awesome. Um, but you can actually animate the text. Oh, you can. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so it's only you available can... on iOS, not on, uh, on the web version. Um, no. The web version's got to catch up. <laughs> it won't work through there either. It's okay. It doesn't pass through. You yeah. get to see how the sausage gets made here at Adobe. I think Live. I might <laughs> have. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might have an example because I do do that sometimes, which is why they were showing. Um, project moving stills yesterday I was really excited because yeah. I feel like if you mo if you created a moving still and then like plugged it into a template like the one that I use for quotes mm -hmm. absolutely amazing oh, like we have a whole thing it's great okay let me see if I can show this here see if it comes up 
Um, yeah, so you can animate all of the, the images. Yeah, that moving stills was so awesome. That was at Sneaks, right? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Awesome, great. So this is essentially Spark on the web, and so this is all the same stuff that we just saw on my on the web version of my of my uh, product here. Um, so if I want to go in and edit the these uh, album art template that I was working on, I just click Edit, and then I go to Effects, and then I get all the options for for the text and also the image in the background. Yes. So if I want to do like a fade, for example, I can have the text fade in. I can have it slide into the page. Have it grow. This is a pun, by the way, like a very obscure <laughs> pun that nobody except like two people in the I audience. I am all about Someone's gonna be like, you spelled it thing. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely supposed to be slan. That is correct. Or a photo. We can have it do that nice little zoom effect. Um, I'm really partial myself to focus. I like focus. I like too. Yeah, focus is one of my favorites. I think I use focus on one of the pictures on our Instagram. I don't think they'll allow me to show it um, from PC. It should work on. It'll work on the web. Yeah, because it, it actually when you upload it to um, to the web, it, it uploads. Oh, as this an, one. As a Here's video. one where I yeah. use. Can we switch over to Kiki's? Thank you. So this is one where I use the same focus effect, and this is a quote that is on a t-shirt of ours that says, revolution is not polite, and so I just used the focus effect to just kind of give it some punch for our Instagram post. I love that. I loved yeah. it too, and so I, I was really excited about this the first time I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Awesome. Yeah, let's take a look at some of the things you've made on, this all is Spark. Like I yeah, can, this yep. is all Spark. Um, and we do a lot of interaction with what's going on with social media. Yeah. So, you know, we no one is safe. That's what we like to say. <laughs> we critique any and everybody and we do our critiques using Spark. I was really Spark. excited about this picture because uh, this is my first time really experimenting with colors but then also trying to keep it within the brand. Mm -hmm. And so the question goes, are you a flotation device or are you an anchor? Do you uplift or do you bring down? And so this is my first time playing with colors and colors in the filter. I was very excited about this one. I think I posted in the insiders group. Yeah, I saw um, it, I remember. I also follow the Adobe Spark like hashtag on Instagram, so I see like all the posts that people make, and it's really cool to see the different ways that people use it. So oh, that's very cool. Yeah, this is one I really, really loved. And so a lot of times when I'm putting quotes on pictures, they're 1,000% original unless I uh, attribute it to someone else. and. A lot of times I'll just be scrolling down my Facebook memories because even though we just started the podcast, I've always been a writer. Um, and so I'll just be taking snippets from writings that I've already done and just kind of plugging them into mm -hmm. um, new graphics. And it's really, really cool to be able to connect in, um, in that way. Yeah, so what, so, what is the, so what do you talk about on the show? Like really, what's a, what's a, what's a regular episode like? A regular episode, um, we have three segments. Three segments yep. The first segment is called Unpacking, unpacking. Black Business. And so we unpack um, some issue either that is central to the entire world or some issue that is very, very central to the black community or black women specifically. And we literally just unpack it. Um, the next segment is called um, Uncensored Tea of the Week. And that's and so, oh, her favorite tea, okay. portion where this she is goes in. That's, that's, about. that's my favorite portion of the show because it's, yeah. it's kind of gossipy, but we still try to keep it like intellectual and in that we only address gossip that is a, has Harming some sort of or has some sort of um, lesson to be learned from mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. sim symptomatic of a larger issue because nothing yeah. exists in a vacuum, even celebrity gossip. Right. And um, there's and like a mini portion within that, historical tea. Historical tea, which is Cassie, yeah. and it's another way that we keep ourselves honest. And so she takes a little known historical event or historical figure and just kind of expounds upon them. Yeah. And then the last segment of the show is called um, Unapologetic. Unapologetically uh, Anti. Unapologetically Anti, and we just rant about stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. What's like a recent thing you had a rant about? Ooh. A recent thing that we had a rant about was um, R. Kelly. Oh, yeah. That's a good, that's a good one to <laughs> yeah, come back to. Yeah, we went in on yeah. that one for yeah, a while. Yeah, we are unapologetically <laughs> anti R. Kelly as a, as a person, as a being, as an existing thing that exists. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, as a concept. Really. Yes. As a concept. Yes. As a concept. yes. Um, and so that's something that we recently ranted about. Yeah. Um, right now we're on a in-between season break because we are revamping and mm -hmm. um, deciding what works, what did it, improving edge sound quality. 
um, and then we're just pumping out this, uh, these other forms of content and these other projects and the podcast will be returning in December. So do you feel like you have to do a lot of pre-production on your shows? Do you sit down together and like work yes, out a we, show script? Yes, we sit down. Do do we, we don't have a script, but we do have very, very structured outlines. Because even though um, a lot of the stuff we talk about is stuff that we kind of sort of know, we also fact check. We like to make sure that everything that we're saying is empirically grounded. We like to make sure that everything that we're saying is academic. We like to make sure that we're keeping each other on topic because I am a person that will go off the mm-hmm. rails. Yeah. Sometimes uh, it's fun to go down a little rabbit hole. And I have to ring her back in yeah. like, get a real shut back up now. In. This is yeah, what we're doing. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah. yeah, the pre-production part is always, yeah. I mean, it's important. It's not the funnest part of podcasting, right. but it's definitely like, you know, an important way to kind of keep the conversation focused and also to be able to have like, almost like pre-built show notes in a way. Yes, absolutely. That's a lot of times exactly what we do. We type out uh, a note on our Apple Mm -hmm. um, notes uh, because everything we do is either Apple product or an Adobe product outside of my lone lone little Chromebook here. Um, And so then we'll just plug those in and then there's the show notes. Nice. So what other podcasts do you listen to? Who do you get inspiration from? I am a bad person because <laughs> I do not listen to other podcasts. Well, I listen to, she a, listens lot to a lot of podcasts. I like uh, The Read. I like NPR Code Switch. Mm-hmm. I like NPR Politics. I do a lot of news yeah. stuff because I'm just always like, what's going on? Um, and then I love uh, Atlanta, what was it? Atlanta Killer. That was a mystery one, Ooh, trying to oh, like. I think I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. I might be the title might be wrong, but it was focusing on a killer in the '70s. And yeah. What happened with that? But yeah, so I, I do a lot of podcasts. Those are a few of my favorites. Awesome. Well, I think that's we've got a few more minutes still, so I'm hoping we can get some questions from the audience yeah. about things that this is. I think there's a slight delay, um, but there is like there's so much to cover. I know I've been doing all week. I've been. It's been like nonstop demos of Spark, yeah. which has been amazing. Um, but it's the the questions from the crowd have been like the highlight of, of everything because they think of things that we never would have thought right. of to include in the product. Um, there's a lot of great like validation about like things that we hope to get into the product in the future. Um, I would love a collab between Spark and Audition. Oh, I interesting. Think- there's a lot of value in doing the videos through Spark. Mm -hmm. However, if we can somehow tweak the sound within Spark using Audition, like kind of the way Rush is doing it now with uh, Premiere, wow, Premiere, yes. (laughs) Yes, so we we do some things that are kind of like built in on the back end of that, like like the way that Rush has auto-ducking, we also have that technology built in automatically, and we try to do some like, you know, noise reduction, things on the back end to make it sound a lot clearer. Um, but like the whole purpose is kind of to, to make it as hands off as possible. Right, right. Yeah, because like you said, there are tools that do that already exactly. much better and are much more advanced. Um, so Audition is great for that. Uh, you know, being able to tweak video in Premiere is great for that. Exactly. Rush, of course, now that it's out live. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I definitely, sometimes I even feel the need to like be able to make like tiny little tweaks. Right. But I'm like, oh, you know, this is, this is for one thing. This is really meant for like yeah, social quick, sharing. Get out there, yeah. Get the information out there, like have people see it as quickly as possible. Um, someone today was like, is there a limit on how long my Spark video can be? And I'm like, you know what? I, I it's don't 30 think second there is. snippets that Each you can do. Each slide is 30 seconds, and we, we build that in as part of like our design guardrails to make sure that people don't like. We, we know that short videos are the best way to get the information exactly. out there into the world, so you can do it, but we recommend that you keep it like sure. tight and concise for sure. One thing with that I would love to see is to be able to move the marker, mm-hmm. uh, have it more specific, because sometimes oh. you want to be able to stop the video at a certain yeah. point and it won't let you. So I think if we can have that, yeah. that'd be great. <laughs> we, had, we had a really fun innovation month last month where yeah. the team got to work on like super secret like fun projects yeah. for Spark that can be integrated later. And there's some good stuff in there okay. that, I, that I hope <laughs> makes it into the product that I think you will, you will definitely like. Awesome. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at some more of your so So you don't do Twitter. You well, we do Twitter now. Do a little bit of Twitter. <laughs> yeah, we do a little bit of Twitter, but not very, very much. A lot of the stuff that we post is actually on the Book of Faces. <laughs> yeah, which which platform do you find to be the most successful for you? Facebook, Facebook is definitely, definitely our most successful platform, but that's because I, I really have kind of sort of a bias 
for Facebook um, in that <laughs> I am still on the same page that I've had since I joined Facebook as a sophomore um, in, high <laughs> in high school. And so Facebook was kind of like my first real social platform that I felt um, a sense of belonging to. Right. I like that we can um, do more long form stuff because I'm, I'm sometimes very, very, very verbose. Uh, sometimes? <laughs> I am a lot of times there very, we go. very, very, very accurate. <laughs> verbose. You verbosity out in podcast form and it works out. Okay. Not now, group chat. Not now. <laughs> um, and so... Oh, this, that's gorgeous. We yeah, actually, we made this with, with Spark, Spark as well. Uh, love of any Negress, support of any Negress. And then we have just a pin post of all of our... Updates and what we've got. Yeah. yeah. How people can donate. How people can donate, links to our merch. Um, and so we just keep this pinned and we sometimes, you know, just kind of change the graphic, but then all the same information. Mm -hmm. um, this is so funny because I never use Facebook Not now, for my group podcast. chat. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Yeah, our Facebook is definitely controversial because we do post a lot of the things that bring trolls really? or bring good discussion. We, we it just depends. We actually last week had a group of racist trolls just yeah, descend just upon swore. our page. <laughs> like, uh, what? They just awesome. descended upon our page and then they were just posting very, very, very racist things to us. They were posting, um, like, Swarm to all try to bring down our rating by oh, not recommending geez. us or rating us one star. All right, we need to get the Adobe Live audience <laughs> to go back there and balance out good yeah. versus evil. But you know what? It's cool because then I had this, because you know that's just the nature of our content. The nature of our content yeah. is that it's going to. It's not attract. for everyone. Yeah. yeah, and that's why we always say we're not for everybody, and we're okay with that yeah. because we're never going to change what we do. If you're not ruffling a few feathers, you're probably not doing anything yeah. interesting, right? Exactly. That's what everybody yeah. says. Um, and so what we did was, in response to that, we made a, a list of rules on what we want our friends and followers to do whenever we have those types of things. And those things include, like, first of all, the page that is attacking us is a fake page. Do not engage them. Mm -hmm. Don't feed the trolls, just report them. Um, yeah. And then eventually Facebook will remove the page altogether. Uh, report the the actual review as unfair or irrelevant because a lot uh, of the times they're not even um, reviewing the yeah. podcast at all because they haven't heard it. Right. They're just, attacking just the fact us. that we exist as people and do the work that we do bothers them and that's not yeah. the source yeah. of a review. And so that's actually been pretty successful in a lot of the people who followed those directions and reported those trolls and reported those pages, got them banned and our rating went back up. Oh, good. So <laughs> That's, yeah. So I mean, thank having, you. having those systems in place, I think it's, it's, it's still, like I said, it feels, social media in some ways feels like the Wild West still, yeah. even though we've been doing this for almost a decade now, over a decade, right. where we have these systems in place but we don't have any way to really like protect from that kind of like those kinds of attacks those targeted attacks um, and it's a it's a systematic issue for sure and I think people are trying very hard to figure it out we've seen the ramifications of what happens when it goes horribly wrong right. like many people especially women women of color like have these issues especially hard right. um, when they're public and when they're vocal about the issues that matter to them so being able to know that you're going to be protected or have some kind of buffer in place to prevent that from affecting your work or affecting your income is like a huge thing that I think we as, as people have to feel like we have in order to feel like we can have a voice. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, especially like if you're a brand like us in that even though, you know, we have these general ideas, our brand is also very, very personal to us and we're very, I'm sure a lot of people are like personally invested, but because the nature of our specific content is issues that literally affect our life, our, our, our quality of life, um, our quality of just basic humanity, um, like the fact that people attack us sometimes. Yeah. It, it, I take it very personally because yeah. our, our podcast and our, our digital space is, is really a labor of love for us. Like we're constantly monitoring just to make sure the people who come to our page to connect with us feel safe in commenting mm -hmm. what they think and what they feel. And, and it's, a, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of labor, but I wouldn't change it because I really, really love what, it, what we do. 
and I feel very, very connected to our audience. I feel very, very connected to our content. And I'm sure Cassie feels, I know Cassie feels the exact same way. I do. Nice. Well, let's get more people to go to your show. So where can people follow, follow you guys online? Where can they go to the website? Where can they subscribe? Well, you can. Um, <laughs> I still Cassie, need to learn the Cassie handles. Cassie has the note. Uh, All the handles. No. Um, so our Twitter is at uppity underscore under, uh, at uppity underscore negress underscore. Our Instagram is at uppity underscore negress underscore podcast. Facebook, uppity negress podcast, all one word. And my medium yeah, is medium.com slash at Cleo say at Cleo J. You can see more of my long form writings. Um, yeah. I do a lot of writings on the specific issues of, um, the intersections of being a black woman and then feminism and those those issues. I do a lot of writing on that. Um, and Cassie writes as well, but I think you took your medium down. Yeah, my medium <laughs> is down right now because again, school is just taking yeah, up my time. School so. comes first sometimes. But I try to do a lot more art and now photography, so that's gonna be on the uppitynegris.org website. Yeah, because we, we do need to move more of our stuff to our actual website because yes. since we started posting on Facebook, we've been unpublished three times <laughs> because people report us. Awesome. Well, <laughs> We're gonna change that. You guys are awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. And if you wanna check out Adobe Spark, spark.adobe.com. Stay tuned, we've got more from Project 1324 coming up on Adobe Live. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>